Welcome back to our home renovation remodel series thing. Another episode of Matt working on his house instead of doing what he wants to do, you know, making furniture and sawing logs and stuff. Anyway, we're gonna get right into it today. We're continuing work here in the sunroom. Last time we got almost all the casing installed on the windows, the sill is done. We have the under sill area to do. First thing I gotta do today is uh, install my floor vents or route the pocket for the floor vents while I have a little bit of space before I put the baseboards on. So this is the system that I went with and uh, bought. So these uh, are laser cut floor grates. They have them in different styles, different finishes. They're steel uh, powder coated. These ones here are a, uh, what are these, a four by 10? That's what my opening is. Yeah, these are four by 10, so they're a little oversized. They're like a five by 11, I think. Five by 11 is like the actual, or five and a half by 11 is your actual size. And you can buy this template, which is uh, also steel cut from the same stuff. And you just use a pattern bit in a router and follow the template. The template's steel, so like once you're just, you put it where you want to, I guess, and just it's heavy and your weight on it is enough to keep it from moving, which feels kind of weird for me because normally I'm like double stick tape your templates everywhere or do something like that. but. We're gonna try just like this and uh, see how it goes, <laughs> I guess. I am uh, I'm only a little scared about routing into the floor I made, but uh, I know a guy that could maybe fix it if he screws it up, so that's kind of nice. That is uh, that's very cool. So all the cool kids paint all this inside here black. So I'm gonna go and do that, I guess. I have uh, never seen this before. So the set screw that holds this block on here that actually holds the bearing <laughs> against the bit came out at some point. So that allowed the bearing to slide up and for my bit to cut under the template. So now I have this situation going on. So I will have to move my template over make it off center. I was trying to get it perfectly in line with my floor lines, but that's not gonna happen anymore. I'll come over this way and away from the wall a little more to capture this oopsie in the, uh, in the rabbit. 
And in the meantime, I guess I will get another bit. I don't think I'm gonna find that set screw floating around in here anywhere. So anyway, here's a closer look. So you got this uh, whatever stopper thing that has a set screw in it or is supposed to have <laughs> a set screw in it to actually hold the bearing tight to the bit and the bearing can now walk and then it gets above the template, but the template can stop here. So luckily I only went in like a quarter inch further than it should be. So I'll always be off by a quarter inch on this one. I just, that's so weird. I've never seen a set screw come out of this thing like that before. Okay, well, I guess let's get this baseboard in here and at least that'll be done. <laughs> uh, okay. So if you missed it last time, Donovan came out with a CNC and cut the pockets for all of these uh, baseboard outlets. And when I had them laid out for cutting, I kind of gave myself a little bit of extra room side to side so I can get my uh, boxes centered on my vents, which are centered on the windows. So this one just needs to be cut so that it's all lined up and then it gets dominoed into the door casing because it's flush. Should be a pretty easy thing to slam in there. So I think now I was planning on continuing to run the baseboard through here, but I can't do that until I get those vent things in. So I ordered a new bit. So whenever that comes in, I'll do those. So we're going to take a little detour. We're going to come into the kitchen and take care of one thing here. We're going to do the band board and the column, not a column, the beam detail. <laughs> the band board on either side and the top jam just to get those in and out of the way. I made them in the last episode and they're big and it'd be cool if they weren't laying around. So we're gonna get those installed uh, now. Okay, like all good stories, at least all the good stories that we've had so far with this project. This one starts with uh, another electrical box. Uh, yes, again, we're gonna be moving a box. <laughs> so here is the, uh, the setup here. So we're gonna have our column detail that comes down over here. This is aligned to where that column detail is gonna come out to. So this will be kind of what you're gonna see over here. And that leads us with this space in here for our V paneling. We want that V to go right through the middle of the box yet again. A couple other little things going on here. We still don't have any drywall on this face here. And then there will be a casing that comes on here. That's going to be a three quarter inch casing. So that line right there is the buildup of the finish onto this side. So this box needs to be centered between this line and that line. So between here, I got nine and an eighth. So that would be four and a half plus a sixteenth. I am talking to everybody watching this on the internet. So this box needs to move this distance here, which is about a quarter inch, maybe a little bit more than that. Just over, just over a quarter inch. So I'm gonna do that. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so before I get the final length on here, I gotta put a little piece of drywall on there. and on, I can't see the numbers. <laughs> one ninety two seven sixteenths. Can you turn it, push it that way a little bit? Okay. All right. Uh, that way. That, that way. It's good right there. Okay. Can you push it back in? Lift it up, lift it up, thanks. There you go. Okay, thank you. You got it? Yeah. Up. That way. Up and up. Thank you. So I have my laser set to the, uh, I guess the bottom of this column. So this one will be set to the same height as that. That head height continues through the rest of these rooms. So I got my little, I don't know, holder thing set. They're set low again, so I can shim this thing up into position. And all I have to do is just try and get this giant board in here. I think we're going to go into the great room a little first and then come back. Oh boy. It's a little lighter than the 18 footers. <laughs> Whew. I cut a little short because the uh, other pieces come into it. So I don't necessarily need it to go all the way. <laughs> okay, let me catch my breath and then we can shim it up. Seems pretty good here in the middle as far as straight this goes. It looks like it kind of bends down over there, but here at least, pretty straight. Maybe just a little bit high, but I think it's probably good enough. My mic died sometime last night, I don't know when, so hopefully you enjoyed the background sounds of whatever my kids were watching. I'm gonna get this other side of the band board up here and complete this column detail now.
So I'm glad those are up there and out of the way. It's kind of nice. Uh, I have the stuff to do this column, which I'll probably do later. I don't feel like doing it right now. That one, again, we can't do until that cabinet's there. So I thought we'd uh, come back in here and start making one of the last things we have to make. We have to make all the paneling, which goes down here. So we got to figure out uh, dimensions for things. So the V-groove paneling, which is going to go on here, is going to be 5 eighths of an inch thick. That will give me a step between my baseboard and the paneling just to give it a little bit of a reveal there. And I want to divide out the space so that I have an even, even the vision, I guess. I don't want like a skinny rip at the end of a remainder. So the plan spec it as a six inch V-groove paneling uh, and I'll make it to whatever a little bit different it needs to be to make this all work out nicely. So we'll have this wall, the paneling will go into the corners. So I'll get this measurement here and take five eighths of an inch off of each side, which is uh, 10 eighths of an inch or an inch and a quarter. That's how fractions work. Two thirteen and three eighths. 213 and 3 eighths. Whoop. Okay, so our total area we want to cover is 212 and 1 eighth of an inch. And I want to divide that out into, let's, let's see if we can get it to 6 inch increments. So we'll start with that number. Divided by 6. That will give us 35 and 1 third pieces which is not an even division. So we'll have to mess around with the number a little bit to get it to fit. Um, so we can go higher or we can go lower. We can go to 36 of them. We can go to 35 of them, I guess. We'll go to 35, obviously. <laughs> we'll go to 35. Let's go to 35 pieces. So we'll take this number again, 212. Jeez, 212 and an eighth divided by 35 pieces. It's going to be 6.06 .06 inches of coverage per piece. So it's almost 6 and 1 16th of an inch wide. And what will end up happening most likely is I'll start on one end, work my way down, and I'll track my progress as I go. I'll probably have to adjust if things get really far out, but I think we're going to be close enough where I'll probably be able to end up landed perfectly there, or perfectly enough where it's not noticeable that the last piece is a little bit narrower, a little bit wider on the reveal. I'm going to do the same thing for the other two ends, see where those end up at, and then we'll have an idea of um, how many pieces we need. This run is 75 inches. If I break it up into 13 pieces, it's about five and three quarters. If I do 12, it'll be six and a quarter. I'm going to go to six and a quarter. That'll be closer to what the, uh, the other wall has. So let's just talk about how, to, how I'm going to make this, I guess. There's a, there's a few different ways you could do this. Uh, if you had a CNC, that would be the easiest thing to do. You could have the CNC cut your V grooves at whatever the weird spacing is, and then you can just come in through here, cross cut, or have the CNC cut your sheets out, and then you can just literally just stick that on the wall, and you're done. I don't have a CNC, so I'm not doing that. We're going to make like actual tongue and groove V paneling, and we're going to use this stuff. This is uh, that moisture resistant MDF is called uh, Medite or Medite, whatever, however you say that. And we'll make actual V paneling. I got a set of uh, tongue and groove V paneling cutters. So we'll uh, set up and cut these at the router table couple smaller things. So I will rip my strips out of here at the finish size I need, plus the amount for the tongue. So that can be removed. I'm going to do the actual milling. And then the other thing is that this is from three quarters. I want five eighths. You can't get this in five eighths. You can get it in three eighths, which I could do, I guess, and fur out from the wall, but I don't want to mess with that. So we're going to plane this to uh, five eighths. So this is just some of the stock. There's some leftovers. I have a lot more, so I'm going to start ripping my strips and getting my strips milled to size ready for uh, routing.
So I have my uh, groove cutter set up in the router table and it's producing this profile here. This is an adjustable set. So if we take a look at the tongue cutter, the top and the bottom half are separate so you can take this apart and there are some shims and uh, washers in there. So you can adjust how far apart these are and that's gonna create the tongue or the groove apart the distance that you want. So I've got mine set up to make a tongue that's about 3 16 you know, since my stock is only 5 8 thick. And I've just got kind of a, it's off center, doesn't really matter, but that's the, uh, that's the profile we're cutting. The other thing you can do with these is that since there is carbide back in here, back in the, uh, where the bottom of the groove is or the end of the tongue is, you can adjust the final width of your workpiece by the location of the fence because you can actually cut deeper and create your final width that way. So all my blanks are over width at this point and I will dial in the final width of my blank on my, uh, my tongue cut in this case to remove whatever material I need to hit those um, final numbers. So I have, I think everything's set up to run the grooves now. So I'm gonna do that and then we'll set up and run the tongues. Okay, there's our three piles with three sizes. I made a couple of error correcting pieces for the long run. I have one that's a little wider and I have one that's a little narrower so I can make up any error as we go. So these can go off the paint and we can, uh, we can move on. Okay, so while the, uh, the pieces are over in paint, I got my new bit. We're gonna finish up the install of these vents and find some other stuff to do. So fortunately the fix on this is uh, pretty easy because I only got to this one corner. The template is moved over this way and away from the wall a little bit. It used to be like right over here. If I come this way to incorporate the cutout here that I erroneously made. Now the vent's somewhere in there. So basically the vent is no longer centered between the two seams here. It's a little off centered. It's a quarter inch to the left, but I don't think that's gonna matter a whole lot. Okay, with uh, that done, I think I'm gonna install the rest of the baseboards next, mostly because they're, they're big and it'll be nice to get them out of the way. So we'll start with this long piece here first. That's a 16 footer.
Okay, so as we round the corner here, we're gonna have a three-piece intersection here. Uh, the way I'm doing this is with the three pieces, I could have just, I could have one piece of baseboard that goes from the corner all the way across, but I have to, I have to scab pieces together anyway, because I don't have a piece of baseboard long enough to do this in one thing anyway. This is all gonna flush out, so because it's flushing out, this is just gonna look like one continuous baseboard with a style on here, which is why you can do it either running the baseboard straight through here and having a style come down into it or having the style come over the floor in that butt end. It's all gonna kind of look like the same in the end. So I have my style stock here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that cut to length so I can figure out my final length for this piece of baseboard and we'll dial into those together and install them all as one piece. Okay, there is that wall right there. Pretty well done, at least visually. So I got that cap piece just kind of sitting in there for now until I get my nailer up here to install it. And then I'll cut and install that short return piece. But there is uh, but there's that wall. And we're gonna come around here. There is the main wall at this point. And then there's this wall. So next, I could do this window. <laughs> <laughs> or else I have this uh, piece of casing I can knock out. I don't really feel like doing the paneling right now, but it's kind of nice outside. So I think I'm going to turn my attention to the windows and do a little bit of, uh, of painting. So you can see, I already went through and put two coats of primer on the stock jam and the stock extension, except for the big fixed middle window, because the, uh, the window trims in here, they're a little weird and I don't really like it. So, I'm probably gonna fix it. So the sort of annoying part is that the windows themselves are not centered in the trim on the inside. So you can see this one's got a nice step between this bead on the actual sash into the, uh, the interior trim. This bottom trim piece is actually thicker than the top one. So it puts this piece actually into this uh, round over situation up here. So that's gonna be super weird on this fixed window because when I go to cock this, I'll be actually cocking this thing up into this, uh, this molding detail here and it's gonna look kind of dumb. Now that is still gonna be the case as you look at these windows because that bottom trim piece is the same that goes over here. So it's actually covering part of the fillet on this uh, molding. It has to be that tall and it's all notched out inside to fit all the mechanism for the operability. Thing. So it's less of a big deal on these ones. It's gonna look a little silly, but at least I won't be caulking that joint and making it look even worse. So this one I think is gonna have to change. I don't really know like why they put this trim piece on the bottom of this one because this is a fixed window. This is to capture the screen. This is never gonna have a screen in it. So I don't know why this didn't repeat the top molding down here, but uh, I think I'm just gonna make a top molding and put it down here so it is actually centered. It's, I guess, not that big of a deal. These are not, not, not the most expensive windows. This fixed one was 600 and the operable ones were eight. So it's not like these are that crazy high-end windows, but let's see. Hey, a free screw. <laughs> um, so I was hoping I could just like maybe shave this down, but I think it's gonna look silly. So I'm, uh, I'm actually just gonna, I'll make, we're gonna make one of those. 
the top trim things. Okay, so this is how it looks now. I think this makes a lot more sense. It looks better. It carries the same detail around the whole thing, which I just, it makes me happier. <laughs> I like this uh, quite a bit better than what used to be here. So again, this is before, way high. It goes like right into the curve here on the window. Doesn't make any sense because there's no screen on this window. I'm happy. <laughs> so I'm gonna get that attached and then I'm gonna do some painting. Okay, I ran out of daylight, but I got uh, two coats of primer on all of these windows, and I put a little bit on the door just to kind of get ahead. The, uh, the temps drop <laughs> as the, the sun goes down quite a bit. So let's, uh, let's get this window in here, because that's a lot of pieces that I could uh, get rid of. So I'm gonna get the, uh, the other jams, the top and side jams, get those assembled and essentially hang the top jam from the, um, the van board. And then that will set the actual final location of the sill. So I got these two, uh, actually these last three windows 
painted, so they're all primed and ready to go. And we have his last little casing to put in. And this is uh, this is nowhere near as perfect as the other side. This one is out by about a quarter inch or so, maybe a little more than that. So the casing that goes here will be tapered. So I have a couple of paint sticks here, which are going to offset my casing, the amount of my reveal that I want, which is a quarter inch. S stick that in there, and then I can, uh, there it is. <laughs> then I can actually just transfer this line from my jam down my casing, and that will be my actual cut line. Okay, so next I want to take care of that paneling down there below the windows. So uh, we'll head down to the shop and prep all that down there and then bring it all up here to actually do the install. The room is looking amazing. It's bright and amazing. So here's our paneling back from paint. So a couple operations we need to do on these to prep them for install. Obviously, we're gonna cut our blanks down to final length. And then I also need to create a rabbit on the uh, bottom edge so that it can be received by the baseboard. So it'll lap together and actually get kind of secured and fastened together so that there's no like this going on along the wall as the paneling comes in. It's nice and tight to this line and I reveal from the paneling to the baseboard stays consistent the whole length. So I've got my three groups of widths. I'm gonna get set up with the crosscut sled and just start Cross cutting all this stuff to all the lengths and then making a bunch of rabbits. Should be fun. So for the install, I have my starter and end pieces, which are the thickness of these pieces longer. So they're just a little bit longer by five eighths of an inch longer than the actual stock pieces. So they go all the way to the corner. So those will go in there like that. For every piece, I have this little spacer here. That's gonna give me my expansion gap appearance. These are not gonna expand and contract, but to give them that look of having that in there, when I put these together with my little spacer in there and I pull it out, the coverage of each panel from the, uh, this edge here where the, uh, the bevel is to the far side where the next bevel starts is the coverage area. And on this run, that was supposed to be 6.06 .06 inches. So that should be right where this is at with the spacer in there and everything. And depending on how close we get towards the other end, as I start getting down there, we can always cheat the expansion gap a little bit. If it's gonna be close, if it's gonna be far, we'll figure something else out. <laughs> but that's, uh, that's how it's gonna go. So as far as securing these, uh, we're gonna use construction adhesive. I have a double uh, sill uh, two by down here that I can hit on the top. There is nothing behind the baseboard. So I'll be gluing the paneling to the baseboard and I'll probably end up just putting some pin nails in there just to hold them in place, hold them tight to the wall, tight into that, um, I don't know, a, a rabbit tight, hold the rabbit tight into the, uh, onto the baseboard until the glue sets and then kind of go from there. So I got 35 pieces for this first run and we'll see how it ends up going.
Okay, on this little wall, I removed the tongue, so that, in theory, should get me right to where it needs to be. I come in here like that. That's my error. <laughs> so I'm gonna split the difference here in the paneling. Right there. Okay, there is all the paneling installed all the way around. It's looking like an actual finished space now. So I have these trim pieces, they're, come, they're back from paint for the windows. So I'm gonna toss these in and that will probably be it for uh, this one. This would be, these would be absolutely impossible to paint in place. I don't know, like you wouldn't get paint on this stuff. All right, so there's kind of where we're at this time. I'm gonna leave this one here. This is quite a bit different than it was uh, just a couple of days ago. So I am uh, I'm pretty happy and ecstatic. It's really feeling like a completed thought of a space and we are, we're almost there. Next time we'll do the uh, cove molding, shoe molding, and we will make and install the crown molding, which will finish up the room and uh, tie it all together. <laughs> there's, a few, there's a few pieces uh, in this room. So that's gonna do it for this one. Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the home renovation or model thing, whatever it is, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.